My favorite day in the job site, window installs. I got all kinds of things going on in the job site today, so I'm gonna apologize now for the background noise. But in this video, we're gonna answer the age old question, double glaze versus triple glaze. We're also gonna take a look at these two different Geldwin products over here that I've used in my house. And we're gonna talk about how you might get a good value with a really high performance window package. Today's build show is sponsored by Geldwin. Let's get going. All right, my friends, this is a question that I've had to wrestle with for many years. And if you look at the internet, there's people that are solidly on both camps who say, you know, you should always use double glaze. It's really gonna be hard to justify the cost increase to go to triple glaze. And you're gonna see other builders who say, you're a fool not to in install triple glaze when you can. Especially thinking that our houses are built for many decades or maybe even many centuries. Why wouldn't you put the best product in now and enjoy the benefits for many years to come? Let's really break it down in this video, including some of the costs, some of the performance metrics, and a few reasons why you might choose one versus the other. Now I'm coming to you from my house under construction, and I've actually used both in my house. I have some double and some triple, so I'm, I'm an interesting case because I have a little bit of both. Now let's talk about these two windows here. This is a double glaze right here, and this is a triple glaze. They're both made by Geldwin, and that's pretty much the case across the board. Most of the time when you're getting uh, a double or triple glaze, you're gonna be able to get that from the same manufacturer. Now I just pulled the uh, performance stats on the double glaze. Let me also pull the performance stats on this triple glaze window. And let's look at that first. So there's gonna be two things you're gonna notice on this label that are really important. And this is the Energy Star label that's gonna come with every window that you get. It's gonna have the manufacturer's name on there and it's gonna have two really important things that we need to look at. First is U factor. And the second is solar heat gain coefficient, SHGC. U factor is basically the insulation value of the window. And it's not gonna be the same as when we think about insulation. I've got some rock wool insulation over there. It's got an R value labeled on there. In a two by four wall, it might be R15. These windows on the other hand have a U factor and it's a point something number. To translate between U factor and R factor, you have to divide by one. So in effect, this double glaze window, which has a U factor of 0.29, that's basically an R3 point something. It's just a hair over R3 if we were to divide that by one. And on the other hand, this triple glaze window is a 0.18 window, almost R6 basically. So we have two very different products. Now I don't love that over the years we've used U factor rather than R value in windows. I think it kind of shields the fact that windows are not nearly as efficient as walls on our house. And you know, an analogy that I heard not too long ago that I really like and, I, and I've used before is, our houses are like Yeti coolers. If you think about a Yeti cooler, we want really thick insulation, we want really good air tightness. And if you were to buy a Yeti cooler and punch a bunch of holes in it, wouldn't you want those holes plugged by something that's gonna do a good job of keeping your ice cold? And that's basically your windows in your house. If you think about this house, it's a Yeti cooler upside down and I punched a bunch of openings in it. Now what am I gonna use to fill those openings? The thing I like about U-Factor is this insulation value is gonna work 24 seven. It doesn't matter what's happening indoors or outside, it's gonna stop heat transfer. It's gonna slow down heat transfer. And that's why I think if you're in the north, triple glaze is really the way to go because you've got more temperature extremes. If it's gonna be 10 degrees outside in the winter and you're gonna heat your house to 70 degrees, that's a giant delta, that's a 60 degree delta. If you're in the south like I am, you know, it doesn't usually get below 30 degrees very often and it doesn't get a whole lot above 100. So I'm usually not within 30 or 40 degrees of my set point. The energy savings on a double versus a triple glaze is a little bit harder. Now let's look at this other number, solar heat gain coefficient. That number on this sticker here for my double glaze is 0.19. That means that 81% of the sun's energy, the radiant energy that hits those windows is gonna be stopped by the low E coatings on the glass. On the triple glaze window, it's not quite as good. It's pretty close, it's 0.23. 
So in effect, these windows are both gonna do a good job of stopping the, the sun's heat as it hits the window and physically comes through the window. Now, if you're in a shaded area, if you're in the north side of the house, let's say, it's not quite as big a deal. And that's a little bit of the strategy that I took on this house. I was concerned about overall budget. This is my family's house. And so I actually varied and used some double and some triple glaze. Now, if you're gonna do this strategy, you typically wanna see your triple glaze on the north and east faces of your house. That's where it's gonna make the most sense to put your triple glaze. And your double glaze, which has usually the slightly better solar heat gain coefficient, you wanna put that on your south and your westward faces. Again, that's what I did here. Now let's talk about cost difference. It's gonna vary big time between manufacturers. You might see the cost difference as little as maybe 10 to 15% more to go to a triple glaze. I've also seen it more like 25% more to go to triple glaze. So it's really gonna depend on your overall window cost. But let's say an average house might have 10 to $15,000 worth of windows. To go up to triple glaze, you might be talking about a, a couple thousand dollar increase. If you look strictly at the metrics, you're gonna have a hard time saving back that money in strict energy costs. However, I would say you're gonna notice the difference right away when it comes to comfort, especially in the winter time. If I'm in New England, if I'm in a cold climate, let's say, it's 20 degrees outside and I've heated my house to 70 inside, that's a 50 degree delta. I'm gonna actually feel the radiant cold from a double glaze window much more than a triple glaze. So, if I'm in my bedroom, I'm gonna to wanna to keep all of my clothes on at all times because my body's gonna to wanna to pull that heat off to that cold glass surface. If I can warm that glass surface up with a triple glaze, I'm gonna be much more comfortable. And I would say if you're a builder in the north, that's a huge reason why you're gonna to wanna to go to triple glaze is because you're gonna want your occupants, your clients, to be more comfortable in their house, especially in the winter time. Now this house in particular that I'm building is a passive house. And I'll go into that in a future video. Check out for my other videos about passive house. But one of the big deals about passive house is we wanna make sure that we're not using too much energy to heat or cool my house. Now, if you're in the north and you're going passive house, you pretty much have to use triple glaze windows. If you're in the south, you can get away with mostly double glaze, but in my case, I needed some triple glaze, and that's what I've got here. I've got some of these Geldwin triple glaze. Now let's talk a little bit of the difference between these two windows as well. Now I've got two different styles of windows from Geldwin here. I've got uh, these Oraline. This is actually not fully released yet in the United States. This is coming soon. I'm, I'm kind of one of their test houses. This is a composite window frame. So it's a vinyl and wood composite. And this window on the other hand is a fairly traditional window. This is their sight line. So this is a wood window that's been clad on the outside with aluminum. Now this is a more expensive window in general, and then when you add triple glaze on top, it's even that much more expensive than these, but you certainly get what you pay for across their brands, or across their lines, I should say. When you go up to this more expensive sightline window, look, number one, look at the packaging. You've got a really, really bomber packaging, much more durable. You also get a film on the glass. This is a plastic that's been applied at the factory to help keep scratches away, so like my brick masons when they come, we're always worried about getting scratches on the glass. That's nice that they've pre-applied that. You also get a head flashing that comes with, now that's not a lot of money, but I love that they do that. Not many manufacturers include that. And it's just screwed right here in the top. So I can pop that off and drop that head flashing on. That's a really nice extra. The fit and finish is also a little bit different as well. These aura lines where I have in most of my house, very nice window. The sight lines, they're even that much nicer. Now, Let's talk about window styles and what you might use. In my particular case, I'm going for passive house. I need a really airtight enclosure, and that's something I talk about a lot. You really want your houses to be as airtight as possible. And one way to both reduce the cost on your window package and make it airtight is to reduce the number of operable windows in your house. And in fact, I have a lot of windows like, let's see, this one right here, which is a fixed glass window. This one doesn't operate. It doesn't have a screen, there's no action. It's gonna be nice and airtight, no wind is gonna get in there. I don't have to worry about locking it. And it's gonna mean that my blower door test is gonna be that much lower incrementally. I'm in Texas, so I don't open my windows a lot. I've got some crazy weather. I also get a lot of mold and pollen season. So I keep my windows closed, you know, 99% of the time. 
These fixed windows in most places work great. You need to make sure you at least have one operable in every bedroom, one exit out of each room. And where I've gone to operables, I've been real specific about doing either uh, casement windows, that's where this action is occurring. It's hinged on the side and it's opening, usually with a crank system. Or I've gone to an awning style. And in fact, I use that on my upstairs gable uh, out of my attic. I wanted to have a little bit of fresh air up there if I ever put a desk up in that space. And so awning style is hinged at the top. That's a particularly good style because if it's left open, the rain can run down the top of that window and not enter the house. So if, let's say, a, a rainstorm came up on a nice spring day when it was cool out, you're venting. If it's an awning style, you're going to be fine. If you have a casement, you want to be sure to close those. Now, the thing I like about casements and awning styles is when you crank those closed, you're going to do a lock system that when you lock it, it's going to push that window against a bulb seal. And that means no matter which product line you've got, no matter which manufacturer, you're going to have a more airtight window than if you have a single or a double hung. Now, there are single and double hungs that are more airtight than others, but anytime you have a sliding action, you're automatically going to end up with a window that's not quite as airtight because there's some type of a brush seal in that window that's brushing up against the other one as it's opening or closing. I avoided that in this house. I went for as many fixed as I could. Where I don't have fixed in my bedrooms, I've gone casements and typically just one operable casement in those rooms. And then in other areas where I might leave a window open, I've gone to awnings. Now guys, as I mentioned earlier, I've mixed the double and triple glazed on this house. I'm gonna be rating this passive house. We're, we've already done the calc, so we're good. If you're in the north, you're definitely gonna to wanna to opt more for triple glaze or lean more towards triple. If you're in the south, you can definitely get away with double, but consider triple glaze like I have, at least for some of those other elevations. The thing about triple glaze and that lower U factor, meaning the better R value, is it's gonna save energy 24 seven, whether the sun's shining or not, it's reducing that heat flow. And if you think about my walls, like on this house in particular, I've got really thick insulation. Everywhere I punch an opening through that, through that thick insulation, I've got a much, much lower amount of insulation. So if I can increase that by putting some triple glaze in, that's gonna make a big difference on energy efficiency and, and especially comfort, like I mentioned earlier. Guys, hopefully this video was helpful for you. Big thanks to my friends at Jeldwin for sponsoring this. I really like those guys. They've got a great lineup of windows. And like I did on this house, you can really mix and match a little bit so that you can make your price point and your performance point. I really like that. Go check out uh, their website and talk to your local dealer. Usually there's gonna be one specific person in your local area that really knows their product line and can help you price out your house when you're bidding your windows and your project. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. And oh, by the way, new content five days a week over on buildshownetwork.com with three other fantastic builders and one other architect shooting high performance videos at their job sites around the country. So sign up for our newsletter. I'll put a link in the description so that every Friday you'll get an update on your email about what's new on Build Show Network. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.